to look at how fast the universe is sort of accelerating or whatever it's doing, you kind of match the, the expansion rate of the universe now and the expansion rate of the universe then. And it's kind of amazing that they kind of agree at all. But it's kind of interesting that they sort of don't agree too. So I know that you're, in order to really do this, if you really want to get to know if it's a cosmological constant, you're going to have to improve every set of measurements by at least order of magnitude, maybe two. And, and as I'm saying, I'm betting that won't be good enough. But to get there, you've got to pin things down now. And I know you've been thinking a lot about that. So I've been working on a new technique, which you could see up here. Uh, you may have learned about, or you certainly understand the concept of parallax, uh, something that even the Greeks knew about, um, where you build a triangle in space, a virtual triangle in space. And the triangle is between a distant object that you want to measure the distance to, and the other two points are uh, positions that the Earth will have at one time and six months later when the Earth is on the other side of the orbit. And just by measuring an angle, the angle of uh, deflection or change of that distant object relative to even more distant objects, you can solve that triangle. You can determine how far away the object is. The problem is that most of the things we're interested in are exceedingly far away. So that angle or that motion becomes minuscule. On the Hubble Space Telescope, uh, we have to be able to detect that a star has changed its position relative to other stars in the image over six months by one one hundredth of a single pixel on the Hubble Space Telescope. That's a very difficult measurement to make. Um, so we have been coming up with new ways, new ways of using the telescope that it was never designed for, new ways that uh, the astronomers and engineers have been able to figure out to essentially get the equivalent of taking thousands of rapid fire exposures, each of which carries information of that 1% of a pixel but because we can collect thousands of them rapidly, we have actually been able to measure down to one one thousandth of a pixel. And so about 10 times better than before, this is going to improve our ability to compare the early universe to the present universe and uh, hopefully tell us if even this hint we're seeing is evidence of dark energy acting in a funny way or uh, it, it goes away. Okay. Oh, you look yeah, like I just itching. wanted to give a little bit of, I, I think it's absolutely awesome to do this, a little bit of historical context in terms of why we are after this accuracy. Sure. And I know you're skeptical for two orders of magnitude. But, you know, when um, Uranus, the orbit of Uranus was found not to match Newton's predictions, Urbain Laverrier said, well, uh, he predicted the existence of Neptune, right? Mm -hmm. And Neptune was found and Newton survived. So one of the reasons why we are all trying to match predictions with theoretical, uh, theoretical predictions with observations is the gaps. So in that particular case, the theory needed a little bit of refinement. So there was another object whose gravity needed to be taken into account. But then once again, Mercury was not fitting the Newtonian theory, right? And there was a precession of the orbit in Mercury. And Aubin Laverrier tried the same explanation again. He said, well, maybe we have a new planet between the Sun and Mercury, and he called it Vulcan. There were even Vulcan sight uh, sightings. Vulcan doesn't exist. It turns out what was needed then was an upending of the theory. Sorry, right? Vulcan does exist. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Vulcan does exist. Star Trek. In so, Star Trek. What? <laughs> as a, as really? an aficionado of Star Trek, Trek, I must admit oh, that. Oh, OK. But, <laughs> I mean, in reality. But I, you know, you're heading to, you're heading, you're heading us in the right direction. Maybe we need new theory and we're going to get there. Before we actually talk about one such theory, I just want to ask you all, um, do you think we'll be able to measure in your lifetime that, w, that, that, the, that this dark energy isn't a cosmological constant? Just a quick yes or no. No fair. That I know, that's no fair, but I <laughs> asked you yes or no. I think we will, we, will, we will fire two bullets at it, right. and I don't know if we'll kill it or not. Okay, <laughs> yes. I think we'll improve the measurements dramatically, but I agree with you. I'm not sure that we will find anything different than we know today. I think we won't measure it, but we may see a hint of some deviation. I hope so. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to pretend I'm John McLaughlin. I'm going to say, no, we're not going to be able to see it. <laughs>